Jesuit missionaries in New France is a pretty fascinating topic that I've worked on from time to time in different ways, and I've, I've looked at two or three specific Jesuits who've left uh, autobiographical writings, Claude Chauchetier, who wrote the story of Gaderita Caguita, um, Pierre Chaumineau. Um, the, the image that historians tend to have of them is of the sort of, it's a kind of heroic or else sometimes anti-heroic, depending on your political point of view. Uh, you know, the sort of uh, European individual who knows what he wants and maybe, maybe you think it's a good thing or maybe you think it's a bad thing and is in charge of the situation. Uh, and is dealing with uh, natives who are, uh, in some way or another, uh, less sophisticated in their approach to whether it's religion or, or whatever. What I, what I found in looking at these guys' personal writings and letters and so on is they were a lot more confused than their published writings would have you believe. They were, in the cases I've looked at, I would call them spiritual seekers. They were looking for something. There was something uh, unfinished about who they were. And they were here looking for answers to questions. Uh, Chauchetier was a mystic. Um, and there's a way in which his encounter that I wrote about in Mohawk Saint with Gaderita Caguitha was a matter of, I call it, you know, the native who converted the Jesuit as opposed to the other way around because she was the solution to his personal spiritual crisis. Uh, Pierre Chaumineau is a fascinating guy. He, um, I, I wrote an article about him. Uh, he he gets his start in life. He's this. He he's the son of a wine grower in Burgundy, and at the age of about twelve, he runs away from home. He's a teen, he's a a child runaway. He steals money from his uncle, runs away because he wants to go take music lessons in another town. Uh, when his money runs out, he writes home to his mother to ask her to help him get home and the letter falls into the hands of his father. His father writes back and says, you're in big trouble, young man, get back here and face the music. And he is so afraid that he, instead of heading home, which is north, he heads south and he decides to embark on a pilgrimage to Rome. He walks from northern France through the Alps. He is almost inducted into the army. His shoes disintegrate. He gets scabies and he gets worms in his scalp and he begs from door to door. He falls in with thieves at some times. And um, this is a long story, but if you've got the time, um, he uh, makes his way begging and sleeping in pilgrims' hostels. Uh, he has a kind of miraculous encounter with a white figure that he thinks is an angel at the uh, shrine of Loreto in, uh, on the Adriatic in, in Italy. Um, he eventually knocks on the, he's knocking door to door in a small town in Italy begging and a kindly old gentleman takes him in and uh, hires, uh, basically employs him as a servant. He he, one of his jobs is to take the kids to school, and their school is a Jesuit college, and they discover at the college that he actually knows Latin because he'd already been to a Jesuit college in France. They take him on as a student, he, and he eventually makes his way into being a Jesuit. And by this time, he's Italian. He's forgotten French, and he volunteers for the mission to Canada and has to relearn French. He never sees his family again. You know, he's left at 12 years old. He never sees his mother again. He makes his way across the ocean, almost, the ship almost hits an iceberg. Um, 
he goes to the Huron country, he learns Huron, he learns Mohawk, he learns Onondaga, uh, Algonquin, he, he learns about, he masters about 10 different indigenous languages and he um, eventually ends up as an older missionary outside Quebec City where he builds as a chapel, he builds a replica of the holy house of Loretto, which is supposedly the, the little house where Jesus was born, uh, in this native mission, and that's the mission church, is his little cozy house where Jesus was happy with Mary and Joseph. And it's so obviously an allusion to his own kind of fractured family life and his own discontinuous life. So, you know, I, I, uh, that's a long story, but my point is these are much more interesting people and much more um, uh, much more uncertain people than the textbooks would lead you to believe. They, they, they wouldn't admit it in their published writings, but they knew they had something to learn and something to find out. Uh, and so the conversation between the indigenous people and the missionaries is far more equal than the published writings would lead you to believe. Everybody is trying to figure everybody out and everybody's trying to find the missing something that they're looking for, whether you're a Mohawk in conversation with a French Jesuit or the other way around. So. Um, in the end, you end up with a different picture than the sort of official hierarchy of the priest who has all the answers, telling other people that he sees as beneath him what they should think and what they should feel and what they should believe.